So by the time you are in your final year, you will be done with both step one and step two CK, and that is like a big achievement. If someone is able to do that by the time of their final year, they are good to sit for the match and get a residency soon after they have graduated. Hi guys and today we have a very special guest Dr Gazala an MBBS graduate thanks for joining Thank you so much for having me Shivam how are you I'm good thank you and today we will talk about the strategic pathway for USMLE exams with Dr Gazala who has already cleared USMLE step 1 and step 2 CK exams so let's begin firstly like what would be the fastest possible route of clearing the steps of USMLE Okay, so the fastest possible route would be like if you give both your step one and step two CK exam in one year. But I mean, I understand that it is not possible for everyone, and uh, even I did not do that. So let us start from the first year of medical school. If you are in your first year of medical school, and at that point you have an idea that this is what I want to pursue, then you have to go by the saying that it is never too early, and also it is never too late. So if you know in your first year that this is what you want to do. then start your preparation from your first year now being said that if you are in your final year and even then it is like a late realization for you that this is not what you want to pursue your residency in your home country and you want to pursue usmle then it is not too late for you you get started from there so coming back to the main question which is what is the fastest route so ideally if someone is in their first and second year you prepare start your preparation in your first year in your second year and then by the time you are in your third year you should be dedicated uh, like 3 to 4 months just for this step 1 exam and then you are good to give the exam in your third year because the baseline is that you are only eligible to give the step 1 exam if you have cleared your first and second year which is the basic sciences if you haven't cleared these you cannot give the um, step 1 exam so even if someone is very intelligent that first year they know everything and now they are ready to give the exam you cannot give the exam until you are in your third year so the fastest way would be that you prepare and you give your exam in your third year after that you come to the step 2 ck so if your baseline is strong that is your step 1 preparation is very strong and you is prepared really well for it then for step 2 ck preparation it will not take longer for you so then it will be just a couple of months and then with the step 2 ck preparation you are good to give the exam so by the time you are in your final year you will be done with both step 1 and step 2 ck and that is like a big achievement if someone is able to do that by the time of their final year they are good to sit for the match and get a residency soon after they have graduated so basically if somebody cracks a mbbs seat and mbbs seat at the age of 18 he might just get a us residency at 23 or 24 when he just completes his mbbs yeah but in our system in india we need to complete our internship as well to get graduation So without that internship 25 would do yeah 25. but i just want to clear that point that you have to complete your internship just don't think that you will just go <laughs> after final year definitely and what is the syllabus for the various steps just give me an outline not the details it is pretty simple so in first and second year we cover the main subjects which is anatomy physiology biochemistry pharmacology and pathology these are the five main subjects that are covered in step 1 So first and second year, the whole curriculum that will come in your step one. In the system we have in India, we also have forensic medicine. Forensic medicine is not included in step one, so that is one subject that will be out. Otherwise, all these subjects, then there is microbiology. I think I missed out. So microbiology also. So all the subjects, in short, all the subjects from first and second year are all coming straight to your step one exam, and this is all called basic sciences. So this is your step one syllabus. now moving to step 2 ck step 2 ck tests your clinical knowledge so it covers all the clinical subjects so all the subjects which are in third year and in final year they all come in step 2 ck so it will include medicine surgery obg orthopedics even anesthesia all these will come into your step 2 ck the majority of step 2 ck is from internal medicine and again because internal medicine constitutes a majority of it from pathology physiology and pharmacology which is covered in step 1 so you have to have a good baseline with step 1 so that you are good to go for step 2 ck okay and how much time like you may take to prepare for the various steps i know it depends on individual to individual but when we 
speak about like preparing for each step i'm talking about the dedicated time which should be given to each step to clear it successfully so um the dedicated time would be completely different so generally what in this usmle thing what people say is a dedicated time is like the last one to two months where you are not doing anything else and just studying for the exam so if i say like the dedicated time it would be one to two months not more than that and for my case i did not have any dedicated time because i was throughout in my medical school so i didn't get a chance any break that i could take this much time out and i would just study for this but people are more strategic they plan it in a way that they are having like their breaks or they take an extension so they don't have to go to college and they can you know just study for the exam apart from them if we look at it holistically for step 1 from the start you might take around 9 months 6 to 9 months like for the whole preparation and as i said it takes a little longer for step 1 preparation because you are just starting and the whole system in your country does not match with the system of this exam so you need to make yourself used to how to attempt these questions how to get the right points out of it so that takes time so attempting and doing these questions is something that you need to learn and this will take time okay and when can you give the exam like when to register so same thing if you are done with your first year and second year you can uh, register yourself for the exam and uh, after like after first and second year any time it can be third year fourth year internship after internship any time so there is no deadline but minimum requirement is that you have to be done with your first year and your second year only after that you can uh, register for the exam but then there is one more thing which is the ecfmg registration ecfmg registration that you can do at any time that is one primary requirement for you to give the exam so you can do the ecfmg registration even in your first year but for the exam you need to get yourself verified that you have completed both your first year and second year only after that you can give the step 1 okay and can students give the step 1 after the internship yeah sure they can and many people do give the exam after internship so they can okay and does being in a supplementary batch matter when you apply to a university yeah that's a really good question so in this whole journey of usmle the one challenging part is that uh, your scores are not just enough for you to get a spot so in our system we see that we have a merit based list you get a rank and by that you have a tentative idea that what branch you will get or what specialty you will even you come to know that which state or which college you will get a chance at but here after getting the scores there are more things that add to it and when we talk about the supplementary batch that is someone who was not able to clear the exam with the regular batch and now you are in the remanded batch so there is one more document that goes into your cv when you are applying which is the mspe the medical school performance evaluation so when your medical school will give you a performance evaluation they will most likely mention that in this year you were not able to clear it and then you cleared it later on so now when it goes into your cv definitely it will come to notice but that does not mean that this is the end of your journey and that is another beauty of this whole system that you always get chances to do extra things that can strengthen your cv so if there is any red flag we call it red flag that anything that can put you down for example being in a supplementary batch or having um, gap years after you have graduated or not having a good score then you do extra things to make your cv strong like your work experience so that will lift up your cv and even then you can apply Uh, so that was a great discussion on usmle faqs i guess we covered all the questions and hope the audience loved it and got the queries covered so thank you dr gazala for clearing all the doubts it was great having you thank you so much for having me